All right, we're going to look at lesson 3.1, linear equations in standard form, and just go over a few examples of real situations. So this says, Jeannie is shopping for t-shirts and sweatshirts. She plans to spend $100. How many t-shirts and how many sweatshirts can she buy? All right, so in the picture here, it shows us that t-shirts are $10 each and sweatshirts are $20 each. All right, so it says use a verbal model. So we're going to say first, let X represent the number of t-shirts we have and let Y represent the number of sweatshirts that we have. Can X and Y be any real number? Well, no, X and Y can't be any real number because um, there's going to be restrictions because you can't have a half of a t-shirt or a fourth of a sweatshirt or that sort of thing. So we are going to have to look at integer possibilities for answers. So let's look and see. It says to write an equation. So if we're going to write an equation, we know that each t-shirt costs $10 and we know that we can call X the number of t-shirts that we're going to purchase. And then we're going to add that to the number of sweatshirts and those are $20 each and that is going to equal $100 because that's how much she has to spend. So it says $100 to spend. So to write the equation we're going to have 10x plus 20y equals 100. Alright then it says identify possible solutions. So you can do that in a couple different ways. One is by using a table of values. So you can say, well, X first, it can't be negative because you're, again, you're not going to have a negative number of t-shirts. So we're going to start with zero. And then they just made a list of zero to 10. So you just choose X values that could be reasonable. All right. So then when we look at that, if we have zero t-shirts, and five sweatshirts, could that be a possible solution? Yes. Well, you could have no t-shirts and five sweatshirts. That makes sense. If we have one t-shirt, we would have four and a half sweatshirts. Well, we can't have four and a half sweatshirts. So that answer would be no. So this is a possible solution. And then if I have two t-shirts, two x's, then I would have four y's and again, two and four are whole numbers, you know, they're integers, so we can have that as a solution. Three and 3.5, nope, we're not gonna have 3.5 sweatshirts. Four and three is a yes. Those are um, reasonable answers for numbers of shirts and sweatshirts. We've got 2.5, so that one's a no. Six t-shirts and two sweatshirts is a yes. And then we've got 1.5 as a no, so we've got 8 and 1 is a yes. And then 0.5, so the last one would be 10 and 0, is a yes. So you can see that the number of t-shirts are even numbers. When you have an even number of t-shirts, then that means you're going to have an integer answer for the number of sweatshirts. So both of those are reasonable. So those could be solutions. All right. Another way to identify possible solutions is to look at a graph. So this is the same table. This is the same table that we just looked at. We can see that 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10 are solutions given in the table. All right? If we want to look at a graph, you can see that the scale is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's the number of t-shirts. That's your x-axis. We let x be number of t-shirts. And then we let y be the number of sweatshirts. So the number of sweatshirts is on the y-axis. And that goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So these are both on a scale of 1, which it says using a scale of 1 on both axes. That's our x and our y. Then we can graph this um, scenario and see what our solutions are. All right, so you can see that 0, 5 is a solution. Okay, 0, 5 was right here. That's an exact point on the grid. Now, if you go from 0 to 5 down to 2, 4, 
there's not an exact point there, which means there's no solution in between there. So the next one is going to be at 2, 4. And the next one is at 4, 3. And the next one is at 6, 2. And the next one's at 8, 1. And then it hits the x-axis at 10, 0. So you know you can't have negative numbers, so you're not going to go in the negative direction at all. So these are all of the possible solutions with the given information. So those are two possible ways to find your solutions for that problem. All right, let's look at a couple more examples. All right, this says which of the equations are linear? Okay, linear, I think that's one of your definitions this week. Linear means any equation that has x to the first power. So linear is going to be x or x to the first power. All right, soon we'll be talking about quadratics. A quadratic is anything to the second power. Cubic is x to the third power, and so on. So right now, we're just looking at linear. So linear, if it has an x or an x to the first power, it's going to be considered linear. Okay? All right, so it says 5x minus 4y equals 3. This one is linear because it has x in it and there's no exponent. So that means it's like just x to the first power. This one, again, that one is linear because it's x to no power, which is the same as x to the first power. That one is assumed when it's to the first power. This one is quadratic. Actually, that one's equation of a circle because the x and the y both are squared, but you'll learn about that a little bit later too. But right now, all you need to know is if x is to the second power, it is not going to be linear. All right, then you want to determine if 4, 7 is on the graph of the line. Okay, every ordered pair, whoops, every ordered pair is um, an x and a y. So we know that this is x and this is y. So x is 4, y is 7, and what we want to know is if this is a solution to this equation. So we can just look at this by plugging in the numbers. So we're going to say 4 times 4 plus 7 times y, y is 7 as well, and does that equal 28? All right, so we've got 16 plus 49, does that equal 28? Well, no, because 49 is already bigger than 28, so this one is no. So the left side does not equal the right side, that means it is not a solution. All right, so let's check number three. So we've got four times x is four again, and minus three times y, y is seven. And does that equal negative five? All right, so we've got four times four minus three times seven, and we wanna know does that equal negative five? Well, 16 minus 21 is negative five. That means 4, 7 is a solution to number 3, okay? So when you plug in the x and the y and the two sides are equal, the equation is equal, it is a solution. On this side, it was not equal, so it is not a solution. I keep doing the wrong thing, sorry about that. All right, let's look at number four. All right, Mimi wants to spend $25 gift card on two kinds of in-app purchases for her favorite game. Premium scans that cost $2.99 and tools that cost $4.99. Write an equation that models the skins and tools that Mimi can afford with the gift card. All right, so just like before, we can say, we can use any variables we want, 
Okay, but we know that this one's going to cost two ninety nine, and we can just call it S for skins, and then this one tools. Let's call it T. Cost four ninety nine. You don't have to put the number first, but it makes more sense if you put the number first. So four ninety nine T. And then that is going to equal, she has $25 gift card to spend, so that's going to equal $25. So you're just pulling the information right out of the equation to write the equation. Or you're pulling the information right out of the problem in order to write the equation. That's supposed to be a little lower. My handwriting is not that great on here. I'm sorry about that. All right. Last two problems that we're going to do for examples. All right, it says determine the x and y intercept for each line. Okay, so this is the x axis here. So the x axis goes across horizontally, and it looks like the x intercept is at 2. So your x intercept is at 2. And we normally write that as 2, 0, because if you go up and down on y, the y value would be 0. So the x-intercept is 2, 0. And the y-intercept, the y-intercept is down here, looks like, negative 6. So that means my x is 0, and my y is negative 6. All right, for number 23, same thing. We're looking for our x and y intercept. So here's our y intercept. Here's our x intercept. Again, x is horizontal, y is vertical. And we're simply going to write that our x intercept our x intercept is at same thing as the other one, 2 0. And our y-intercept is at positive 4. So 0 is our x, 4 is our y. And we know that those points are solutions because they are points on that line. All right, if you have any questions about linear equations, please let me know.